Welcome to the account information section. The account section gathers information relevant to a particular year. In this example, we have the years 2014 and we're talking about business type tax preparation. So this year actually is a tax return year. I could have this be a calendar year, default to the calendar year or any year I'd like and that's all set up in admin under the business type section. The next field is account type and because we're in the business type tax preparation, it's gonna be the tax return type. So we have 1040, 1041, 1065, and this can all be customized in admin under account type. And if it was anything other than business type tax preparation, again, you can customize it to fit the business type that you're working on. Difficulty, in this example, we are using stars to rank the difficulty of the tax return. And this is also set up in admin under the difficulty. Referral type, this is tracking what marketing campaign is working for your office. And again, you can set this drop down menu up under admin, under referral type to have display exactly which referrals you'd like to display. Account number, this is a number that's unique to this business type for this uh, client. So if you have a client that has multiple business types, say it's tax preparation and insurance, this could be a policy number. And you can also do a search for the account number. And when you add a new year, this account number will go forward each year. The do not file, do not e-file checkbox. You would just check the box and then a note would display and you'd have to put in there why you would not be e-filing this return. Again, this is specific for tax preparation. And this is really designed for there's a report, a discrepancy report, returns not transmitted to try to identify returns that were never e-filed. So if it wasn't supposed to be e-filed, say it was an amendment or a prior year return, you'd want to check this box to keep that report clean and accurate to try to identify those returns that may have slipped through the cracks. The user, the account user, that's normally going to be the tax preparer when we're under the business type tax preparation. Now this drop down menu here. Time, this is gonna be the uh, prep time for this client, for this, for this year. And it's uniquely linked to difficulty. So in the difficult, under admin difficulty, you can set up, say for four stars, it would then change to 90 minutes. But you can always override it just by putting whatever time you'd like in that field. The site, that would be which site did the client go to this year? And again, in this example, we have three sites. Business type, tax preparation. This will default, if it's a new client, it'll default to whatever is set up on that for this individual user when they added the new client. But I can pick any business type I'd like. Retention, how many years the client's been with us. Uh, as we add years, it'll increase by one each year incremental and you can always override it by putting whatever you'd like in that field. The reset office events checkbox. If you add a client, say for example, we add this client and it'll default to business type tax preparation. So I have certain office events that automatically will create when I add a new client under tax preparation. So if I want to switch this now to say uh, prospect, I would check this box to reset my office events because now I want to add the office events that are specific for the business type prospect. And I just hit save. And so what that do is basically it's going to delete the office events that were created under business type tax prep and then it'll reset it and create the ones that should be under the business type prospect. That's all this checkbox is for. Received by, that's going to be the, the person that basically checked the client in. In this case, it says self-check-in. This client checked themselves in using, using the self-check-in screen. Received date, that's the date the actual the client, the first time the client came to your office for this, for this year. So when they were checked in. Scheduling type, this is, can be set up in admin also. So we have a drop-down menu of walk-in and not applicable. 
Let me switch it back over to tax preparation. I'll reset my office events. Hit save. And now we have appointment, drop off, walk in, or NA. So this is just trying to gather information about your client. Do they normally schedule appointments, drop the returns off, or are they walk in? So if you're using Adam's calendar and they schedule an appointment, it would automatically record them as an appointment. The other ones you'd have to, or also a walk in. Drop off, you would have to manually select drop off if you'd like to keep track of them so you know, just so you know your client a little better. Due date. This is typically, since we're in the business type tax preparation, it's going to be the due date of the tax return. And this date right here is linked to the account type. So you would set that up in admin if, it, if anything's changed. And if you were to change the status to extension filed, the due date would automatically change to reflect that extension. Which now we get back to, now we're at the status drop down menu. And these are just your office events that as you move it to the next status. So if I select drop off and I save, that will close out the lobby office event. Oh, as soon as I put a referral in here, save it. And this is a preferred, if you're in a business type tax preparation, this is a preferred method of changing an office event because by doing so, you close out the current one and you open a new one all within one step. In this example, we have a note required down here in the office event. The save account button, that's just, if you change anything, you need to save it to delete an account. Um, what you need to do before you, it'll even be, you'll be able to delete an account year is you have to remove all your office events, all your transactions, any task notes, any account uploads, everything linked to that particular year has to be deleted before it'll allow you to actually delete an account year. To add a new year, if I were to select add a new year, because I'm in business type tax preparation, it automatically will default to the current return year, which happens to be 2014. So I will get an error message telling me there exists a return for the same year and the same client in the database. So if I'd like to change it to either prior year, maybe this client's coming in to do a 2012 return, I would just change the year to 2012. I think I already have one for this person, so I don't want to do that. Say I'm just going to go ahead and change it to 2015. And then I select Save. So now I just created a year 2015. As you notice, when I hit add new year from within the client file, all it does is copy everything forward. So it copies even the even my preparer. Uh, but this is add new year is what you'd want to do if the client were to come in and have multiple years. It'll default when you check the client in, it's going to default to the current year. Then you just select add new year. It's going to give you the red message page. You just change the account year to whatever year you're doing and then hit save. And that's easily how you can add multiple years quickly. Account documents, that's just where you're going to store all your documents that are related to this account year in this business type. Select on that, it goes to my account documents page, and we have a whole training video on how to do that. And lastly, I have log hours. If you're tracking time to build a client, what you want to do is if you select the log hours, button. Let me just enter something here. Do not e file box. So the log hours button is just going to take you to the punch clock, punch clock, but it also has the client's name right there. And then from here, you just log the hours and we have a training video on that. Now to have the log hours button actually display, you have to have a billable rate associated with the user and that's done on their user page in the tax reporting information section. That's all I have. Thank you.